painted our five basic shapes using just black and white and the values that we created in between. Uh, you gathered a variety of other interesting white objects and you've painted them and loaded them and that was lots of fun. And now we're painting with color. So the next idea is to find a variety of shapes around your house or in your garage or in the refrigerator. Something light, something mid-toned, and something dark, but in color. Make sure those colors are varied. You know, don't get two yellow things and two red things and span the palette as you will. The other thing that you should look for is a variety of shapes. Combine the shapes, the values, and the colors. What I gathered from my house and my studio was a red teapot, a lemon, a lime, a carrot, and this is a bottle of vanilla. Delicious. And then I arranged them. I have sort of a cylinder shape, sort of a sphere shape, sort of a cone shape, and a variety of colors from dark to light. So I'm happy. I put these objects inside the box, I laid a tablecloth in there, and I lit it from one source. When you get your light source, you'll put your light on it. You're gonna to wanna to move the light around. Where do you like it? Do you like it up here? Do you like it from underneath? And then it casts big, long shadows up the painting. Your imagination and your, your ability to envision and exercise it is super important. It's a muscle. If we don't use it, we lose it. So the world becomes gray and lackluster, which is really no fun at all. Exercise your imagination. Move your still life around until it makes your eyes dance a little bit. Okay, we are ready to paint. I have my toned canvas here. I have my still life in front of me, which I'm looking at, and I have my mixed colors. This is a practice exercise again. There's nothing um, precious about this painting. It's an exercise in color. So move through it with a light heart. So the first thing we're gonna do is find our big shapes. We want this entire thing to fit on the canvas. So if I am looking at this lovely, lovely little setup that I prepared for myself, I see this as kind of the big shape. I know the whole thing is gonna fit on my canvas. That's what I want to make sure of. It's our job to compose it, make sure it all fits in there. I'm using transparent earth orange to sketch this out. I'm gonna find my biggest shape in there and that would be my teapot back here. It's back here, it's shaped kind of like a cone. It's angled like that. Little lid, I'm just loosely sort of uh, putting my big shapes in there. pretty good start. That'll work. Um, i show you a really valuable lesson. If I decide this is not laid on here the right way, do that and start over. Because if you start painting something that is not put down there to begin with the right way, you're just going to wind up pushing things all over and it'll become a big old unfun mess. I'm going to start it all over again. Let's try it again. Here's my high point, that's the top of that teapot, comes down in a cylinder shape. Got a couple of, couple of circular things here. A, uh, what is that shape? It is a cylinder, that's right, it's a cylinder. Carrot comes across here, runs back there. This is also shaped like a cone, this little carrot. The back of the teapot. About there. The base of the teapot. The spout of the teapot comes pretty far down. And there. The handle of the teapot where I was standing goes right into the lid of that little jar. That little jar has a skinny neck and then it's got some big old hips and it goes straight down. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old, your big old hips just go straight down. Same on the other side. Boom, boom. 
I'm gonna check some of my intersections where my point, where do my points intersect? This line might start a little bit further in. It comes through the bottle. It intersects down there. And, there, and it, I see a little bit more of it on that before the carrot interrupts it. I'm gonna check my points on this lemon. The lemon comes off the line. The little end of the lemon, whatever you call that, right here, comes forward. All right. That looks like it's laid out the right way. It's enough to get going. Okay, now we're gonna look at what's in light and what's in shadow. That's all we care about on this drawing. Oh wait, I forgot something. You know what I forgot? Cast shadows. And they're super important because they help describe the form of what you're looking at. So let's just get our cast shadows in there. They're sort of elongated. Comes in like that. Just for my own, I know that's cast shadow. And then the teapot comes up here. Runs up there, comes all the way around, and back in there. That's all cast shadow. And I got some cast shadow from the lemons down there. And I got a cast shadow under the carrot. 